from uh, JP Morgan, which is uh, a very popular investment bank in Wall Street uh, on how to use machine learning in, in finance and investment. Now, machine learning models can be used in finance and investment, but the way you use machine learning models in uh, finance and investment is quite different from how we use them in other fields, simply because the nature of the problem in finance uh, is very, very different from other fields, such as in e-commerce or aviation or manufacturing supply chain, you name it. Right. So it's very, um, you know, very unique in a way how we use machine learning models in finance and investment. And uh, people who work within the bank, they only uh, know about how to uh, use and where you no know, machine learning models should not be used for a variety of reasons. And uh, <clears throat> also there are many restrictions in, in finance and in banking. Hence, uh, you know, the, the flexibility is less compared to, you know, other fields where you can, you can uh, build any sort of models wherein um, in finance, it's not the case. So it's an amazing paper. It's about uh, the use of big data and AI strategy in investment and, uh, and, and, and various areas of banking. Uh, so many people from uh, JP Morgan Quant team have uh, written this paper um, and they, they have written this paper for investors. Um, you know, so they've written this paper of, for investors to understand how machine learning and AI and big data is going to change uh, investment, quantity investment in particular in the future. Uh, so they're talking about algorithm trading. They're talking about uh, merging fundamentals, doing quantitative investment analysis, uh, and just about using big data <coughs> in uh, various decision making process within the bank. Right. So uh, this is uh, a very uh, technical paper also. Uh, it's not, uh, you know, in, it's, although it is written for investors, but I doubt if, if you are from a non-technical background, you can understand them. But they have tried their best to uh, make it uh, as simple as possible. The language is quite simple, uh, but they have discussed about use of big data, use of machine learning models, different form of machine learning models, whether supervised uh, learning, unsupervised learning, um, right? So they have used all of these things. They also talked about deep learning and reinforcement learning in this paper. So wonderful paper. If you like to go through this paper, I think I would highly recommend uh, to you. Uh, here is the table of uh, content. So they have started with some basic definition of what is big data and why machine learning now because banks have been using mathematical models simulation based models uh, statistical models for a very long time but more recently they are also switching over to machine learning and big data uh, but that's somewhat different although not very very different from statistical modeling or traditional statistical modeling um, and they are discussed about a number of things they are discussed about using uh, regression classification clustering models and, and then how to use neural network models such as deep learning models and how to use a completely different type of learning models such as a reinforcement learning which is not supervised learning neither uh, unsupervised learning is totally different type of uh, data learning process and then they all discussed about how these techniques can be used in investment which is very important because you won't get many case studies about uh, invest, you know, use of machine learning in, in investment and finance uh, on the public domain. Uh, you won't find that on many blog posts also. These are very internal to banks and uh, they will not share this, uh, this information. But it's a good thing that they have shared this to the outside audience. You know, they start with uh, defining what is big data and the revolution that has happened because of uh, you know, and now data is generated through devices, through sensors, through social media. So there is enormous amount of data, but a lot of that is garbage. How to get good information out of the data to be able to use uh, in investment and financial decision making. Right. Of course, you know, in traditional finance, you take only the macroeconomic data, you only take the internal uh, transaction data. But beyond data, you can also, uh, beyond that also, you can use other forms of data and we call that as alternate data, right? So how do you use alternate data? That means social media data, sensor data uh, for uh, developing models uh, for investment uh, purpose, right? Um, 
new data sets are often larger in volume, velocity, and variability. And that's the definition of big data, right? Um, you know, they start with the basics of like machine learning. If you're familiar with machine learning, I think you are, you are already, uh, you already know all these things. Um, however, what is very important in this paper is how to use these techniques, supervised and unsupervised techniques, whether it's k-means clustering, whether it's logistic regression, whether it's uh, um, cluster analysis, you know, these uh, techniques to find out alpha, to get alpha from the enormous amount of data that is at the disposal at, for many banks. And they also discussed about deep learning and deep enforcement learning, which are more even more complicated models uh, and how to use them. Okay, um, perfect. I think they, they've started with uh, defining what is alternate data. We're talking about alternate data. You know, I was working for a company that is using uh, satellite data to build a customer scorecard, you know, to, to uh, assess credit worthiness of um, SME, SME clients. Okay, so that's alternate data. That's not what you use normally in a credit scoring model. Right? Alternate data can be, you know, from you know social media from news and reviews from web searches reviews on different you know social social media platforms whether it's facebook twitter youtube uh, quora and you know all these places and then you have insane amount of data with transactions for example credit card transactions corporate data government agency data right uh, for example in india you have aadhaar data uh, in all countries and you have uh, you know a lot of information with the municipality with the government with the tax department so that data can also be used and then the sensor data sensor data is very very new actually uh, in many countries you cannot get sensor data you cannot have access to that because of the privacy reason especially in europe actually but in many countries you should certainly can get access to satellite data or sensor data also uh, whether it's you know look location for example the data that is uber has so many banks can you know access the data uber has can buy the data from uber I i'm not sure if that is allowed for variety of variety of things right uh, or maybe have a collaboration with uber uh, if they cannot use the data directly they can collaborate with them and and you know start uh, experimenting with that sort of data if that that can be used for uh, in, in investment purpose or not right so so the paper starts with defining what sort of data is generated what sort of data can be leveraged uh, and it talks about also alternate data which is non traditional data and then it talks about how these things can be used for different uh, investment in different asset classes um, whether it's equity whether it's commodity credit rates foreign uh, FX <clears throat> and then type of investment with this macroeconomic investment, um, quantitative signal based investment, um, yeah, many many things actually. It's it's an amazing paper actually. Um, simply because they're talking about uh, real use cases. That's one important thing. Unlike in many places where the use cases are simply academic use cases and not uh, the real use, use cases used in the banks. And this is coming from JP Morgan, one of the biggest bank in the world. And uh, it is meant for the investors. So, it, you know, so it is quite practical. It's quite applied in nature. So very interesting in that way. Then they discussed about different types of machine learning models, regression models, classification models. What is uh, you know supervised learning model? What is unsupervised learning model? You know, so they're educating the investors. Um, so you can also have a look, uh, and they're talking about which models can be used where, right? From an uh, investment point of view, whether it is you know uh, forecasting prices, it's about uh, understanding the relationship between macroeconomic variables and the prices. Um, you know, finding out different scenarios for macroeconomic variables in the future and what sort of models can be used for what. Uh, supervised model can be used for, you know, price history, uh, um, forecasting return, and etc. Unsupervised learning can be used to explain return 
right? So what are the things that generate uh, returns? And you have deep learning models, which can also be used for a variety of things to most important to find nonlinear relationship because nonlinearity is, is uh, a big challenge in traditional classical models, statistical models. Statistical models are not that great in uh, capturing the uh, nonlinear relationship, which the deep learning models are really good at. Uh, so they have also discussed a bit about that. And uh, yeah, this is this is very important actually, right? This is like uh, the list of models used in, in investment. Regression models could be simple linear regression, but also lasso, spline, exibus type regression, classification, logistic, SBM, random forest, hidden Markov, right? Well, many people would argue that logistic regression is not a classification model. Although it is used in classification problems, but not a uh, classification problem, but a model rather uh, in a linear regression model. Um, then different type of clustering, whether it's k-means clusterings and the other type of clustering, factor analysis, principal component analysis can also be used. These are part of the unsupervised learning algorithm where there is no target variable. Then you have deep learning models. Um, you have CNN, the uh, uh, convolutional neural network. Uh, yeah, it's very difficult to pronounce, right? Convolutional neural network, CNN or RNN, uh, then LSTM, um, right? Um, yeah, there was no generic uh, Gen AI back then, right? But now it's already also available and also used uh, in investment. And there are other approaches such as reinforcement learning, semi-supervised learning. Reinforcement learning is very different from supervised and unsupervised learning, right? And uh, they've also taken some examples, uh, how to build a lasso regression, how to build a k-means regression, logistic regression, how to build a random forest model or decision tree in order to uh, build investment models, how to use uh, unsupervised models such as principal component analysis, uh, or how to use even deep learning models such as uh, the multi-layer perceptrons or the CNN models or the LSTM models. LSTM is used uh, more like time series models uh, for forecasting. And then the unconventional approach which is the reinforcement learning, quite heavily used actually reinforcement learning, Q learning, those models are also used in investment and they also discuss about that. Uh, some theoretical concept, for example, the bias variance trade-off, you know, uh, how to ensure that uh, you 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 strike a balance between bias and variance because you cannot have you cannot control both uh, and what's the best way to optimize on that so this example um, yeah you try to maximize on the error the chances of the model becoming overfit is more in the future right so how to strike a balance uh, all right, and then more question about how to get data, right? The more tech stuff, right? How to get data uh, from web, uh, how to store data uh, in different cloud platforms, Amazon, AWS, how, what sort of languages are used are Python, Tableau, Excel, you know, what other tools data scientists in JP Morgan use and how they use uh, to get signal uh, for alpha generation. Uh, yeah, it's a wonderful paper actually. It's it's uh, a paper if you want to know how to use ML and AI in um, in finance in general. This is a very good paper actually. I've read a lot of other papers also, but those are very academic papers written by academicians, very theoretical and uh, not at all practical. But this is very very practical, and they have also oh, given some code. You can try it out. Um, yeah, so this is a typical length of history for alternate data. Alternate data, we have discussed about alternate data, Twitter data, Facebook data, satellite data, you know, sensor data, the Uber data, you know, location data, that sort of data. Yeah, then data from individual activities. I am not sure if they can make use of Twitter data, individual data, uh, unless uh, there is permission by the users, uh, otherwise it's always a privacy issue, right? 
and uh, we all know what happened to Facebook um, when Facebook actually sold personal data to different companies and they had to pay fine. And there are some uh, other ways of getting good data. For example, uh, here you see Google Trend, Alexa data related to website, Google Trend again related to different search items, uh, Glassdoor and LinkedIn data for employment. Uh, imagine you know unemployment rate, employment rate data can indeed be sourced from government, but sometimes that 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 sort of data is unreliable. You can make use of uh, Glassdoor or LinkedIn data to. Uh, you know, get information about uh, employability in a given country, and then that can be used as a as a macroeconomic variables actually, right? Um, to perform some simulation, yeah. So these are the examples actually. This is where the interesting part starts. Right? They have taken different asset classes, whether it's equity, it's forex. They have taken different asset classes and they've shown as to how you can use uh, machine learning models to forecast uh, prices in the future, to understand the relationship between macroeconomic variables and the price moment, to simulate uh, future scenarios and so on and so forth. And how to you know, come up with the trading strategy, the investment strategy based on machine learning models. Here is this case study using email receipt data to trade a US equity. Right. This is an amazing case study. Um, how to get data from sensors, you know, different companies that are providing sensor data. Um, the second case study is using uh, location data to estimate retail sales. You know, retail sales can be used uh, to know whether retail uh, stocks will do well or not. And then based on that, you will decide whether to invest or not. Yeah, then there are quantitative strategies they have. So this is the benchmarking or, or comparison they have made. So you see that in some cases it's outperforming, uh, but some cases it's underperforming. Right. Then there is another case studies, uh, satellite images uh, of parking lots and trading retail stocks. So satellite images uh, on parking lots with the parking lots are uh, um, crowded or they are empty depending on that uh, banks would like to trade on the retail stocks A wonderful case study right uh, then yeah a bit more about what model techniques can be used all right so this is an amazing paper if you like to go through I think this is uh, an amazing paper to go through. They have also provided, I think, um, a lot of case studies, amazing case studies. If you are not familiar with finance topics, I think you might struggle a bit. But if you have some understanding of finance, I'm sure you will be able to understand most of the things. Um, they are also given code, by the way, Python script. Uh, they are also given uh, the theory behind all the models. Um, so it's a very good mix of theory as well as um yeah here is you see the python script right this is this is the python script to use um, for all these analysis you can also take the data and run the script just to understand uh, how things work uh, i think this is uh, this is also python yes i was thinking maybe this is matlab but this is python yes all right, if you have any questions, do not uh, hesitate to uh, contact me. If you want to learn quantitative finance, I'm creating a course on quantitative finance. You can uh, use the link in the comment section uh, at the top to provide your details, your email. Uh, when the course is ready, I'm going to share with you um, the details about the course uh, on quantitative finance. All right, thanks. See you next time, guys.